Valence bond theory can't explain some observations about molecular compounds without the concept of hybridized orbitals. Let's consider methane, which has the formula CH4 and has that Lewis structure. If we look at carbon on the periodic table, carbon ends with 2s2, 2p2. The problem here is that valence bond theory would predict that carbon can only form two bonds because valence bond theory says that bonds form when atoms that have orbitals with just one electron overlap with other atoms orbitals that also have just a single electron that's when you get a bond well then carbon could only form two bonds according to this and clearly that violates what we observe in the real world suppose we took one of those 2s electrons and moved it up and put it in that empty spot in the 2p orbitals this is called promotion of electrons we've now solved the problem of carbon being able to form four bonds because now it can because it has four unpaired electrons but this leads us to a new problem and that new problem is that the bonds that are formed wouldn't be exactly the same if we have a 2s orbital in carbon overlapping with the 1s orbital in a hydrogen versus a 2p orbital in a carbon overlapping with the 1s orbital in a hydrogen and again this violates experimental evidence that suggests that every one of these four bonds in methane is exactly the same as every other so here's our new solution we're going to assume the creation of hybridized orbitals what we're going to do is we're going to take this 2s orbital and this 2p orbital and we're going to mix them together and then when we're done we're going to have four new orbitals and each one is called an sp3 orbital an sp3 hybrid orbital because each one was formed with the input of 1s orbital and 3p orbitals I'm going to try to use an analogy here with buckets of paint to help us understand what we mean by hybrid orbitals what we're going to be doing is we're going to be mixing certain of these buckets of paint and when we mix them we're going to give the buckets new names we're going to note that some of the buckets aren't mixed some of them are and that the total number of buckets always stays the same I've got blue I've got three yellow buckets of paint and five white buckets of paint these seven buckets I'm gonna leave unchanged I'm gonna mix a blue bucket with a yellow bucket and I'm gonna call those buckets BY buckets one blue one yellow notice that the total number of buckets has stayed the same if we leave those six buckets the same and mix the other three we will get three equal by2 buckets if we leave just the white buckets the same and we mix these other four we're going to get four equal now just bear with me now we'll leave four of the white buckets the same and we're gonna mix these five when we do we're gonna get five buckets all with the same color paint and each of those buckets we're gonna call by3w one more and then we're done you want to guess what we're going to call each of these six buckets by3 w2 now instead of calling these buckets of paint with B's and Y's and W's I'm going to represent them now as orbitals S's P's and D's S orbitals come in groups of one P orbitals come in groups of three D orbitals come in groups of five if I hybridize an S orbital with one P orbital I get two sp orbitals two of my p orbitals are unchanged as are all the d's unchanged if we hybridize one s with two p orbitals we get three sp2 hybrid orbitals one of the p orbitals is unhybridized as are the d's
And finally, if we take the 1s with all three of the p orbitals and hybridize them, get equivalent orbitals called sp3 hybrid orbitals, and the d's are unchanged. This is what we had in an earlier slide when we were talking about what we do with methane when carbon is sp3 hybridized when it's formed methane. If we were to take one of the d orbitals and throw that into the mix, we're going to start with an s orbital, three of the p's, one of the d's, mix them all together, and when they all pop out, we get five equivalent sp3d orbitals with the other four d orbitals being unhybridized. And lastly, if we take two of the d orbitals and hybridize them with an s and three p's, we get six equivalent sp3d2 orbitals. However many orbitals you start with, that's how many you have to end with. Now, I want to point this out. Caveat. Warning. It is no longer universally accepted that d orbitals participate in the process of hybridization, nor that sp3d or sp3d2 hybrid orbitals exist. So I'm only including them here because there is a pattern. In AP chemistry, as of 2016, all you need to know is the hybridizations up to sp3. It's very easy to figure out the hybridization state of, say, a central atom in a molecule if you know how to find the electron domain geometry around that atom. Because the electron domain geometry points directly to the hybridization state of that central atom. If the electron domain geometry is linear, the hybridization state is sp hybridized. If it's trigonal planar, it's sp2 hybridized. If it's tetrahedral, it's sp3. Trigonal bipyramidal, is sp3d, which I said on the previous slide they're not going to ask you about in AP chemistry, but I'm just following the pattern. And octahedral sp3d2. Recall that the number to remember for linear is 2. For trigonal planar it's 3. I hope you're seeing a pattern here. For tetrahedral it's Four. For trigonal bipyramidal, it's 5, and for octahedral, it's 6. Now, when sp hybrid orbitals are formed, there are two of them formed. You see, you start with an s and a p, and you mix them, and you pop out two sp hybrid orbitals. When you make sp2 hybrid orbitals, you make them three at a time. When you make sp3 hybrid orbitals, you make four of them at a time. sp3d, five of them at a time. sp3d2, six of them at a time. Now let's go back to the upper right. If you used up one of your p orbitals in making the uh, sp hybrid orbitals, then two of the p orbitals are unhybridized. Similarly, for sp Two hybridization, one of the p orbitals is unhybridized. sp3, all of the p orbitals are hybridized, so none of them are unhybridized. With sp3d, one of the d's has been used up, you might say, or subsumed within the sp3d hybrid orbitals, so four of them remain unhybridized and in the case of sp3d2, three d orbitals remain unhybridized. If these diagrams here represent the electron domains, we would predict that the hybridization state of this central atom is sp2. If these are the electron domains, we would predict that the hybridization state is sp3d, five. Here there are six domains shown, we would predict a hybridization of sp3d2. Let's end with this slide here. 
SP hybridization occurs when 1s and one of the three p orbitals hybridize. It results in the creation of two sp hybrid orbitals, which are colored orange in this picture. The other two p orbitals, which are purple, are unhybridized. They retain the figure eight or dumbbell shape. What we have on the left, this orange orbital, that's an sp hybrid orbital. This one is a second sp hybrid orbital. The purple, a p orbital, is kind of a dumbbell or figure eight shape. So there's one of them right there going up and down, and there's another one coming towards us and going back into the screen. That's the second unhybridized p orbital.